Hi everybody. Um, so I'm I'm Matt Brulee. I'm the product manager, as Andrew has kindly said, of uh, of Colorway here at the Foundry. Uh, and today I'm going to be showing you um, a quick slideshow up front. I don't like slides in any way, sense or form, um, but there's got to be a few up front just to kind of explain exactly what Colorway is. Uh, where it could potentially fit inside your pipeline. Uh, and then, of course, I'll be showing you a demo with the uh, cinema uh, kit that we released recently for Colorway as well. Um, so with that done, I'm going to hide my webcam. Uh, I'm going to bring up some slides. Bear with me. There's only about two or three minutes of them, uh, and then we'll get directly into a demo. Uh, so I'm just going to stop sharing my webcam, and we're going to hop over into a slide application. Uh, so I'm going to full screen this. So introducing Colorway. So uh, let's have a look. Well, when I started, um, well, actually before I joined the Foundry, really, I was a uh, freelance 3D modeler. And I did a lot of hard surface modeling, never really any good at the organic stuff. So it was mainly hard surface. Um, and when I did it, I realized that I was kind of doing the same thing over and over again at a certain point in each project. And that was the fact that. Um, when I got to the end of a project, I'd be iterating around and iterating around these very, very small changes with the clients that I was working for. Uh, and I kind of started referring to this as the iterative design loop uh, that I was stuck in. And when I joined the Foundry, I realized that it wasn't just me. It was many, many, many other people as well. And not just in hard surface modeling, in all types of modeling. In fact, in all types of design, even visual effects as well. Um, and the loop goes a little bit like this. You essentially start by doing 3D stuff, 3D things. Uh, and when you've done it, uh, you know, you're modeling, you're texturing, you do a render. Now, obviously, we'd all love it if the rendering happened extraordinarily quickly and was instant. But of course, you know, it isn't, uh, even in cinema, even in Modo. So there is inevitably some waiting involved here. Uh, and we're going to come back to that waiting in a second. Now, after you've waited, you know, several hours or overnight for your render to complete, uh, you're going to send it off to your client. Of course, they need to review it. Uh, they need to ensure that you're doing the right thing. Uh, you want them to say yes at this point. It's perfect. Um, but, you know, usually the clients actually take a little bit of time to get back to you. So, yet again, more waiting. Uh, they will eventually, however, get back to you with their comments. Uh, you'll get their notes back. And once you've done that, well, you iterate, right? You have to go back into 3D. You make the changes that came in from their notes. You re-render. You then have to re-wait. You send again, maybe more waiting for them to pick it up. Uh, and you just keep going around this loop until they say, yes, I'm happy. It's done. Uh, and then you're perfectly happy. You get paid, and you carry on with your life. Um, so the two bits that really frustrate me with this iterative design loop is, first of all, the waiting that's involved. Now, the waiting is no good for you. It's no good for your client either. The reason it's bad for you as the freelancer, as the person who could potentially be doing this work, is because, well, you don't want to have to wait. You're not being productive while you're rendering, really. You could be getting on with other bits of work. You could be essentially be making more money uh, and getting more clients, really. So it's not very good for you. Now, it's not very good for the client either, because they may have said something very simple, like, you know, can we make the stripes on this object slightly bigger? Can we change the color slightly, make it more red? Uh, it's a pretty small change in their eyes, and you're taking, what, a day to get back to them with a different kind of uh, version of the image? That's not a good thing either. So the waiting is not good for anybody. We don't like the waiting. Uh, the second one down here is the getting the notes from the client. Um, so the problem with that is that you're never going to get back things that are very specific. You'll get things like, can we make the red more green? Can we move the logo this way slightly? It's never going to be, can I change this to something like, you know, red 255, uh, green 75, blue 21. It's never going to be very specific. And because of that, there's going to be a, a level of you guessing what they want. So you're going to be looking at their notes that they've sent and trying to assume that you know the best thing. And of course, when I used to do this, I always really, really hoped that I wasn't pushing it too far or that I was pushing it far enough. Uh, because obviously, if you don't, if you get it wrong, it's just another go through this loop. So what is Colorway? Where is this going to fit in? How does it solve this problem? Well, what I'm going to be showing you today um, is we have two desktop applications to show. The first one is Colorway, just Colorway by itself, currently running on Mac and Windows. The second one is Colorway Presenter. Now, the difference between the two is that Colorway is an application with a slightly more technical side, and that sits in front of you, the person doing the 3D work, the person who understands shading and rendering and texturing, everything that's involved in the process. 
Colorway Presenter, however, is a version of the software that will sit directly in front of your client. And so, of course, we had to hide all of the scary things away inside of Colorway Presenter. We're also going to be showing, of course, the Colorway Kit for Cinema 4D. So at the very start of this, I'm going to be looking at a common demo scene that we've got, and I'll be setting it up directly for Colorway. But coming soon, I just quickly want to talk up front about two extra things that I think are very exciting. Uh, we have Colorway 1.1, which is really pretty close at this point. In fact, if you're kind of uh, eagle-eyed, you might notice that I'm using it today. Uh, the second thing is Colorway Presenter for iOS, or more specifically for iPad. Now, this gives us something very interesting, which is the fact that Colorway Presenter can now sit on a desktop, or it can be held by you when you go and visit your client to show them the review, or alternatively, they can you know, download your project directly from Dropbox onto their version of the Colorway Presenter for iPad, review, and send changes back directly to you from that device. So very, very cool stuff. Now, the last couple of slides promise it's not going to take too long. Uh, how does this look now with Colorway? If we start using Colorway, what is your design flow really going to be? Well, we're going to start off by doing the 3D things just like before. However, in this case, we're going to render it out to Colorway. Once we've done that, we're going to open up the scene inside of Colorway, and we're going to edit and prepare it. And of course, I'll be showing you that in a second. We're then going to send the Colorway scene to the client for review. They're going to view all of the things that you've possibly set up inside of your scene directly inside of Colorway Presenter, of course, not seeing any of the technical scary stuff. We've hidden all of that away. And once they've viewed it, they're going to send any looks, which are these kind of variations of the scene, back to you for review directly in Colorway. And then the really exciting part of all of this is that everything that goes back from the client to you can be sent directly back to 3D as well. Now, all of this is going to become more clear in a second. Uh, I'm going to hop out of the slideshow, and I'm going to pop over into cinema. So I'm just going to hide the, uh, the panel here. So this is our demo scene. Uh, if I open this up, you can see I've hidden a few extra panels in here. This is the scene we're working with, this coffee machine, uh, made by Tomas Leachinsky. Great guy, great model. Um, and inside of the scene, it's pretty typical, really. We've got a lot of uh, different objects parented to a parent locator. Uh, and we've also, if I move this down, uh, we've got some lights, cameras, and stuff at the bottom as well. Now, what you may notice is that we have these blue tags. Now, these are colorway tags inside of your scene. And right now, I'm just going to grab them and delete all of them because I'm going to do it completely from scratch. So it's very, very simple to set up things for Colorway inside of Cinema 4D. All you need to do is tell Colorway which parts of your model you want control over and which lights you want control over once we get into Colorway. So in this scene, uh, what I'm going to do is I've actually put this together in a little group called For Colorway. I'm just going to grab all of my parts inside of here. I'm going to come up to my tags colorway tags and add a colorway part tag. You see it's one of the two. We've got colorway lights and colorway parts. Now inside that tag options down here, you can see you can give it a custom name if you want to do that. I'm just going to leave it exactly as it is for now. Uh, and then up here, or oh, sorry, down at the bottom even, uh, I'm going to select the lights that I want control over. In this case, it's all the lights in the scene. Uh, I'm going to come up to tags colorway tags, colorway lights, and you can see we've got area lights, point lights in there. We've also got a Lumagon. Uh, I want to take that over as well, so I'm going to go to tag, colorway light, and inside of here you've got a few extra options. Uh, the first one, group, is actually really useful. So imagine you've got a room where you've got lots of different lights on the ceiling, like lots of different light panels, but essentially it's the same lights. You either turn it on and off. Well, in this case, what we could do, if you wanted to group all of our point lights together as one single light inside of Colorway, I could grab all of those tags and give them a single name. Then, when I'm inside of Colorway, they'll appear as a single item. I can manipulate their intensities, their colors in real time as a single item, and then any changes that come back into Cinema will be distributed accordingly to all of those lights. So with that done, what I would do is go up to Plugins, Colorway, and we can export a deep color file. Now, it's going to bring up this dialog. It's going to warn me of any things that uh, might be potentially wrong with your scene. Of course, as you can see up here, this is version 1.0 v1 of the Colorway kit and of Colorway itself, in fact. Uh, so we're going to try and support as much as we possibly can uh, in this process. But anything we can't support will be warned inside of this dialog. Now, in this case, I can just see that the default light will be disabled during export. I haven't specifically tagged it, um, so it's going to be turned off for me. And that's actually what I want. Now I'm going to click continue. I'm going to choose where it needs to go. So I'm just going to say colorway scene. And you would just hit save. It's going to give you 
one last option, which is to allow procedural textures. And what this will do is it will bake in any procedural textures onto the object's surface before it sends out into Colorway. And at this point, you hit export. It will render away in the background, and uh, we'll be done. In this case, I'm just going to hit cancel. Of course, we're not going to actually export during the webinar. Uh, but once it's done, you would hop over into Colorway, and you would open up the scene that you exported. So this is the scene, exactly as we had it inside of Cinema, and just to prove that, I'm going to go back and uh, actually let's make this a little bit smaller. Let's just select that and do a quick preview render. So we'll just give this a few seconds, and what we should see is that this looks exactly as it does inside of Colorway, if all has gone well, which I'm very much hoping it does. Uh, so yeah, you can see this looks exactly the same as this, except of course the framing, but of course we have the camera gate on either side here. So with that done, back inside of Colorway, you can see that compared to a 3D application, be it Cinema, be it Modo, be it Maya, be it anything at all, uh, it is a very simple looking application. Uh, there's really none of the technicality involved with setting up shaders, render options, anything like that. We've tried to make it as absolutely simple as possible. In fact, just to make it a little bit nicer, I'm actually going to go into full screen mode as well. Now we have our image inside of here. If I hit one, uh, it's going to allow me to select it full speed, uh, full <laughs> full size. Sorry, not full speed. Uh, if I hit two, it's going to be at half size. Uh, so you can edit it, you can move it around, you can zoom in and out. Everything you would normally expect. But the key thing here is that your image is the center of the application. It's the big main part of Colorway. Now at the bottom here, you can see that we've got these five buttons. So I'm just going to run you through these left to right quickly, and then we're going to go ahead and set up this scene. So on the left here, we have looks. Now you can think of a look as a bookmark for the state of the scene. Now when we go through and start changing things like light intensities and colors, uh, adding colors to parts in our scene, maybe textures as well, we might want to store different variants of our project. And we can do that very easily in the look panel over here. Now, every time you export a project from Colorway, you'll always have one default look that you can't change and that you can't export, uh, so you can't delete, and that's the original look. And this will always take you back to exactly how the scene was set up originally. So that's your looks. The next panel here, the little cube, is our parts. And what you can see inside of here, highlighted in red, are the parts that we can change in the scene. And we have several parts in here corresponding, if I hop back into cinema, to these tags up here. So you can see we've got body front logo, body head front panel, hop back into colorway, body, body front logo, I've got water bottle, front panel, all of our parts are available for us to change. And we'll come onto that again in a second. The third panel over here on the right hand side are the lights that we tagged, exactly like the parts, we get individual control over all of the lights that we had at render time when we exported out to colorway. And down the bottom here we have an intensity control and a color control as well. Now the last two buttons here are actually quite special because these only appear inside of Colorway. They don't appear at all inside of Colorway Presenter. And these are the technical things that you as an artist here are going to have control over in order to set up your scene for a view in Colorway Presenter. The first one here is the materials palette. Now whenever you export from, uh, from Cinema to Colorway in Colorway 1.1, uh, you get a nice tree view of all the materials you are using up here. Now in my original scene, I prepped it. I'm just going to hop back into cinema to show you that. We have a very simple set of materials here, but importantly, I prepped things like the reflectance color, any bump, any displacements that I'd included would be baked in and sent over directly to Colorway as well. The important thing here is that Colorway is changing color only, as implied by the name. Now, color in that case really does mean color, texture, and decal, but the important thing is that we're not changing bump, we're not changing reflectivity really, and we're not changing displacement either. So just something to keep in mind. So I'll hop back over into Colorway, and you can see we've got a single base material here, and if I select it, we get three sections for this material. As I said just then, we get a color, we can add a texture, and a decal as well. Now as a slight sneak peek, uh, I'm just going to set this to a slightly darker material. In Colorway 1.1, we can also change the diffuse amount of the material. We also get control over the reflectivity amount of the material as well, which is actually incredibly useful because it's done on a per material basis. So it means that if you want to see what this looked like at 100% reflectivity, 60% reflectivity, 40%, 20%, and 0%, you could very easily go in and compare those with Colorway 1.1. So that's a very quick sneak peek. Uh, I'm just going to put that back as it was. 
So that's the materials panel. The final thing here are the filters that you can add into your scene. And you can think of this as a way to grade your render before you show it to your client. So we spoke to a lot of people, and they uh, all said to us that usually they put on things like a nice vignette. Um, so you have kind of on-screen controls for a vignette here that you can add in. Uh, we've got things like color correct, so you can add in full color correction inside of here as well if you want. Um, and other effects as well, uh, things like lens effects, so kind of uh, noise, you know, uh, chromatic aberration, that kind of stuff too. And who doesn't love chromatic aberration at the end of the day? Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of those guys, and we're going to go through and start prepping our scene now. So this, at this point, is exactly how it rendered out from cinema. The first thing I usually find myself doing, uh, and you can resize these if you want to see bigger or smaller thumbs, is selecting all of my lights in my scene and just changing their intensity down to zero. Oh, sorry, I missed one or two at the top here. The uh, webinar panel slightly got in the way. Let's just pull everything down. There you go. And at this point, we can selectively grab a light and pull that up and start relighting our scene in real time directly on the GPU inside of Colorway. Now, whilst I'm doing this, imagine how long these changes would take directly out of cinema with all of the re-rendering every single time that the client demands a change. Uh, so I'm just going to pull this light up. We're going to make it slightly kind of orangey like that. Now, I know in this list I've got two point lights uh, that are lighting my background. There, here. You can see they have a nice blue color currently. Uh, I'm going to pull that up. Uh, this this is another great example of the speed involved. Let's say that the client didn't like that blue and they wanted it to be a little bit more greeny. Uh, inside of Colorway, of course, it's a single click. Uh, if you had to re-render that, that's going to take an awful long time just to make that very simple change. Um, so in this case, I'm going to pull it up to somewhere around about there. I'm just going to get rid of my point light filter. And we're going to go down and start adding in a few extra lights as well, just to really tweak this and relight it exactly as I want it. Now I know I've got a nice uh, light down here, which is giving me a nice highlight on the side. I'm going to pull that up slightly. And this looks pretty good to me. I'm quite happy with that lighting setup. Now, I've spoken to a lot of people recently who actually want to use Colorway purely for lighting setups. They don't even care about changing the colors of the parts, but you can definitely see why this would be a useful thing. Um, so if I wanted to store the current light study, uh, I could just hit the plus down here at the bottom of the look panel. I could quickly rename this to light study one. And of course, very quickly, I can iterate between the different light studies, the different looks that I'm creating in my scene. Um, so why don't we create another one just very quickly. I'm going to go back to my original. Uh, I'm just going to grab everything again like so, and pull it down. Oops, sorry, messed the slider. Never a good thing. Like so, let's just uh, do another light study. Let's make it a bit more dramatic, shall we? So something like that. Uh, maybe we'll come down to the bottom. We'll grab this guy and pull that out just slightly. And then this one just a little bit as well. So something a little bit more dramatic. Of course, we could store that look as well. I could call that light study too. And we can very quickly uh, switch between them, either by uh, double-clicking the bookmark over here or by using the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard to very quickly switch between these. Now, it's important at this point to know that that all of these changes are being made at the full resolution of your cinema render. Uh, and all of these looks here can be batch rendered out to disk in a matter of seconds. Uh, so you can very quickly create many different iterations inside of Colorway, many different variants, and very quickly split them all out to disk. Of course, uh, I'm not going to do that right now. We're going to go on and start creating a couple of material options in here. Now, something that did come up in the early days of Colorway was the fact that you might not actually want to give the client control over every single part of this image. Uh, and in this case, that's true. Really, I want to give them control over a few sections here. Um, so I'm going to go into my parts panel, and I'm going to start using this lock icon. And this is going to lock things away so that when I send it over to Colorway Presenter, they're not going to be able to change it. Now, before I do this, I can give it a default material. So let's say I want to lock this base here, which is this part down here, the bottom. Uh, I can quickly add another material to that and just drag it down to black and then lock it. We're going to do that in a couple more places just very quickly. I'm going to do it to the top here as well. I'm going to create a new material for it, drag it all the way down, and lock it away. So at this point, uh, I just want to do one last thing, which are these two guys down here. I'm happy with those being white, so we're just going to lock those straight up. Now, something interesting uh, that I just did, if we hover over our parts here, you can see that we get this little highlight. Uh, and this is essentially the same thing as selecting a part from the list here. So if I select this side, you can see that this body highlights. Uh, alternatively, if I click off, I can just select it directly in the viewport like that. So I'm going to hide the parts panel at this point. 
Now, on all of these parts, when you select them, you're going to get up this HUD, and this contains two things. The first thing is, of course, this nice infinite color wheel, which is incredibly useful for us, but something that we definitely want to hide when we show it to our clients. And, of course, that is what happens inside of Callaway Presenter. The thing at the bottom here is slightly more interesting, and this represents all of the materials that can possibly exist on this part. So let's say I want to come in and make a slightly black material. I could just hit the plus, grab another red material there. We'll make a red, we'll make blue, and maybe make a green as well. So at this point, I can select very, very quickly from all of these different materials for that specific part in my scene. Now, if you do want to hide this highlight whilst you're working, which I often do, you can just tap O on your keyboard and you'll notice that goes away. Um, so with this done, uh, I won't want to use these colors elsewhere on my part, on my uh, model, sorry. So I'm going to bring up our materials editor. I'm going to grab all of these uh, materials. Actually, let's do it this way. I'm going to grab all of these parts in my scene, like so. And uh, I'm going to just deselect those guys. Actually, let's do it this way. Let's grab these guys and that one. Uh, and let's grab everything that's not locked, essentially. Uh, I'm going to come up to these materials. I'm going to grab them. I'm going to come to the top of my screen, go to Parts, and hit Apply Materials to Selected Parts. At which point we can come through, and you can see that every single one of those parts now has all of those options for us to use. So we're now going to go in and set up a look for our client to review. So in this case, I want to go back to my light study. I'm going to select this item. I'm going to set that to black. I'm going to set this to black. Uh, sorry, black. Set it to red, even. Uh, I'm going to set uh, this guy here to red as well. Set this guy to red. So we've got a nice kind of red, white thing going on. Uh, I'm going to create a new look, of course. I'm going to call this red and white, like so. And we're going to do another one. So I'm now going to change that to blue. And we're going to have a blue and white option. So we're just going to create one more look, like that. Now, in this case, I'm going to uh, delete away the light study, if I can spell the word blue. <laughs> blue and white, there you go. I'm going to delete away the light studies because we don't want our client to review these guys. So I'm just going to get rid of those. Now, the only things that the client will see inside of Colorway Presenter are red, white, and blue, white, and uh, at the moment, the original as well. Now, we can test exactly what the client's going to see by hitting the E key on our keyboard or coming up to File and View in Presenter mode. Now, you'll see at this point that they're only going to see the looks that we've created. If I start selecting things in my viewport, you can see that we don't see the infinite color wheel. We only see the options that you've provided for them. If I try clicking the parts that I locked, I don't get any access to those whatsoever. The client can't change them at all. Um, and in the lights panel, any lights that I've locked as well um, will not be available to the client. So, for instance, if I come in to my lights panel here, let's say I want to lock that point light. Uh, and I want to lock this point light as well because we don't want them changing the background color. Um, if I hop over again, hit E, you'll notice that those lights are no longer in that list. So this is really good at this point. We've basically set up our scene ready for Colorway Presenter. Um, so I'm going to go up and store my file. I'm going to save it out for my client. I'm going to hop over to Maxon Webinar. I'm going to call this for client. You would then, of course, shut down um, Colorway and you would open up Colorway Presenter. So let's just hop out of that, hop into Colorway Presenter open up our project. And you can imagine that I've got my, uh, my client hat on now. This is exactly what the client's going to see once they open Colorway Presenter. You can see it's exactly what we saw in our little preview mode. They don't get access to the things that we've locked. Importantly, they don't get the technical options on the bottom bar down here. They literally only see exactly what you've let them see, which is the really important part of this. It's all about the illusion of control. Uh, but you can imagine if you sit down with a client and show this to them on an iPad, the fact that they can sit down and actually interactively change different parts of the scene is going to be quite exciting. So with me as my client now, uh, I can look through these ones and say, well, I like the red one, I quite like the blue one, but actually I kind of want a green one, right? So we're going to go through and we're going to change this to green, like so, because of course clients are never going to be entirely happy. They're going to want to change the color slightly. So I'm going to create a new look. I'm going to call this look, no, no, this one because this is the one the client really wants you to see. Now, the client doesn't have to send the full file back to you. They can just email back a very small snippet. Uh, we're going to export this to Callaway. I'm just going to click from client. And the client, of course, will now close that down. Now, back in Callaway, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to open up and import any looks that get emailed back to you from your client. So I'm going to import that in. So from clients, and what we'll notice is that we get their look directly back in Colorway for you to review. So you can look at this look and think, okay, I now need to send this back into Cinema directly. 
Now before I do, I want to show you a few extra little fun things inside of Colorway here. So the first one is we're going to experiment with some materials just a little bit more. And the really interesting thing for this, now first of all, you'll notice that the color changes are applying through the reflections here and also through the refractions, through the glass as well. And of course that's a big thing, they have to, otherwise the scene wouldn't look any good. However, our textures and decals also do the same thing. So let me just quickly add another material to that. I'm going to add a texture into here. I'm going to uh, come in very quickly and let me just grab that image. I'm going to grab my flowers. And you'll notice that I can very quickly move these uh, textures around. Uh, they they uh, go through the UVs of the object. So in this case, what you'll notice is that they're showing up through the glass and they're showing up in the reflections as well. And as I manipulate them, of course, in real time, all of those are updating. If we do the same thing to the side here and I add in that flower as well, what you'll notice is that as I move it, it's going to move, I just pull the go to webinar panel out of the way, uh, it's going to move up and around the object. Now imagine how long these changes would take to make inside of cinema uh, and re-render every time the client says, actually I like that flower, uh, but can we please scale it down a little bit uh, and can we move up towards the top of the coffee machine. Now that change is gonna take a really, really long time. So the fact that we can do it in real time is actually fantastic. Um, so with that done, uh, I'm gonna go back into no, no, this one, uh, because this is what the client wants. I'm gonna to go to file and we're gonna export it back into cinema. So I'm going to export to cinema, like so. Uh, I'm going to come back into cinema at the top here, and this is our current render, obviously. I'm going to go to plugins colorway. We've got an import look option here. I'm going to say export to cinema, which is the thing that I just exported from colorway. I'm going to open that up. Now, when you do, you're going to get access to all of the looks that were inside of that colorway project. I'm just going to hit no, no, this one, uh, which is a name I'm slightly regretting at this point. Uh, but you can see that you can update just lights. You can update just materials if you want. Um, you can match all of the light intensities and everything that we've changed directly inside of Colorway. Uh, I'm just going to hit import on that. And the first thing you'll notice is that we've got some extra materials down here at the bottom, uh, and they've been added into the correct parts. And if I now do a render, what we should see if everything has gone to plan um, is that the lights and the parts in our scene are going to look exactly as they did inside of Colorway. So let's do a quick comparison. That's Colorway. And uh, let me just hide the panels down here and view that. I'm going to go full screen, of course, to make it look really, really nice. So that's Colorway, that's Cinema. So all of the changes that you've made have come back directly into 3D. Now the really important last point on this is that it really gets rid of that you having to guess what the client wants. They're no longer in a position where they can say, well, the green that I sent back to you is not the green that you've rendered with. Because you know for a fact now that the settings that they chose in Colorway Presenter are exactly what you saw inside of Colorway and are exactly what comes back into Cinema 4D. So, that is pretty much it 